Bomb. That's not going anywhere. It's today's video. I'm out here with my 1970 Challenger and some back roads in the forest testing it out real quick. We're gonna chase out all the steel components and suspension components up front and make this thing drive like a brand new 1970 Challenger again. And then we're gonna do a test drive before and after to see if it actually makes a difference. So to do this video properly, we're gonna take the Challenger for a chest drive to see how it drives before and after. So the thing is, we've got a lot of slop in the steering, right? And I can feel that we have like a loose tie rod or something. And if you guys listen, did you hear that? Boom! I don't know. We'll look into it. So uh, let's go for, uh, for a quick test rip first. I have just duct taped my camera to the dash, so if it went, it's gone flying, then you know why. Carburetor is still a little bit cold, it feels like. Also, I got a brand new carburetor for this thing. I bought it off eBay, 150 bucks for like a stock carburetor. Hey, that's a huge crash right here. I don't know if you guys can see that in the camera, but like right there, that car is done. Inner and outer tie rods in both sides pretty much have like a little bit of slob in it, so that's there's definitely like one or two inches, I think, of slop that we can remove in this thing. I think and hope so. It's still an old car with a steering box set up and stuff. So you're just never really gonna get rid of like all the steering slop. Uh, maybe if you upgrade to like a new Borgerson uh, steering box, whatever. But uh, as it is right now, you're probably not gonna get rid of it anyway. Yeah, I mean, driving down these sm small forest roads right here with a little bit of spirit driving. Duct tape, hold in there, okay? We're going for a rip like the old Duke boys. Like we're doing 50 down a, a single Swedish rally, a thin little rally road right here, right? And uh, it's doing just okay. Oh, by the way, we low on fuel too. So I'm just gonna throw it in on a little piece of dirt road here and just play around with it a little bit. You can also hear that sound. I'm not really sure what that is, but it sounds like this steering column uh, has like a bad bearing or whatever, like the, the, the shaft itself is uh, bouncing around. This is the roads that I was filming the Christmas tree video on. So we're gonna head back to the shop now and then we're gonna get the car up on a lift and then we're gonna change out all the things that I bought for this thing which is tie rods, ball joints, a new carburetor, spark plugs, air filter and then we're gonna see how this thing drives afterwards. Let it rip leading tower power! These like old school one cylinder lifters, whatever, it, it's kind of hard to like get the car position where it actually like sits right or whatever. It took me like two tries there back and forth. Uh, spray paint on the ground, uh, front and back on the driver's side, because then I can open the door, clean out, uh, look at those two spots, and then line the front wheel up and the rear wheel up, and then boom, there you go. We're just gonna go in right here on the wet concrete, I guess. <laughs> and I'm gonna make a, a line like that. And a line like that. Don't worry about the tires, okay? It's gonna get worn up real damn quick with my driving anyway. And there you go. Now I know exactly where to park every single time and I can just crawl under it, position the arms, lift the thing up. Also guys, remember to clean your tip. Do -do 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 -do. 
straight into the trash cans because it's Mo Papa. <laughs> Brand new, one barrel carburetor. Hell yeah, bro, little rip. Voila! These are Autoline, yeah, Autoline, which are the same ones that I bought for my Ford, which work absolutely mint. The, the cartridge, that bark sound, whatever, when you, when, you, when you open up the frog, you don't want to be. Bam! That's not how that sounds, but anyway. Oh, well, let's get this big airball. And away we go. And away we go. Please don't spin. I'm gonna do all the front suspension right now on the Challenger. <laughs> Dust cap off quickly, adjusting up the wheel bearing, drum off, and then we should be good. As you can see in this one, they also converted to a normal wheel start, so you don't got a right hand fret and left hand fret, as you do on all Mopar cars up to 1972. A lot of people break their the wheel starts off, but this one has already been converted, or already been broken, I guess. <laughs> so right now, let's get the bolt out for the shock and uh, loosen the torsion spring, and we can come in here, loosen up the low ball bearing lock, and hopefully just hit the control arm with a hammer, and then it's gonna pop loose. If not, it's gonna be a lot of fun like the other side of it off camera, where probably used two hours just to separate the, the ball joint because it was pretty much just seized in there so uh, wish me luck <laughs> there you go and these shocks are so broken or worn out that I can pretty much just lose them and then pull the bolt out as you can see you can just take the shock here and then just push it up here and then it's gonna stay up there while I work you don't need new shocks <laughs> then we're gonna get our three quarter inch the tie rod ends over here So I just noticed something about a uh, loose joints, uh, by the way. This nut has been this loose while driving. Luckily it had a safety split or a cotter pin through it, so uh, it didn't go anywhere. But uh, if it didn't have a safety, safety split, we could have lost the wheel. Yep, that stock as well. So the problem is like the, the pickle fork has to go in this way, but then it hits the spindle. If we put it in this way, it's too steep of an angle. And there's not room on the other side because uh, the steering arm is there. So as you guys saw, I wasn't able to get the pickle fork on. And this is my first time actually changing ball joints on a Mopar or whatever. It just hit me suddenly that uh, you can remove the backing plate like that with the two big bolts right there. Suddenly you have all the access in the world to uh, knock that thing right out. You live and learn, I guess. And some people just live. <laughs> there you go, first try. That was pretty easy, huh? <laughs> then we just gotta get the tie rods off. Also, in this complete survivor challenger, you got rubber pads, you got plastic inner fenders around the brake lines and the steering stuff, so that's not as much room to work on, but uh, I guess it's kind of cool it's still there. Well, there you go. One victory on the ball giant turned into another defeat on the freaking tie rod. This end was absolutely seized into the drag lane or center lane or whatever. And it's completely pitted around like the, the concave area or whatever where it seats into the arm. Mopar no kind. <laughs> Please kill me. So we got our new ball joint here. Just gonna slide that on right there. Then we take out two bolts that has to go through the backing plate slash bindle, I guess you can call it. So there we go. I'm gonna pivot it up here. There we go. Both bolts in. Then we're gonna put our two nuts in the bolts in the back and then torque them to spec afterwards. Then we can take out a shot that is permanently mounted up top, pull it back down. <laughs> That's how you know you don't need new shocks. When you can just push them up and the rest there for a minute while you're doing your work. So what I just did now was take off the two tie rods and the adjusting sleeve in an entire assembly or whatever. And then I took a measuring tape and measured out at a 32 point 
four centimeters or whatever uh, from grease insert to grease insert, which is usually how I measure them because usually the grease uh, nibble or whatever is directly center of the, the joint. Usually is. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I have the adjusting sleeve right here, the vice, and I'm pretty much just going to take the, the new outer and inner tie rods, thread them in, and then we're just going to do the same measurement from, uh, from center to center, 32.4 inches. It's fine. You don't need an alignment to get more life out of your tires, do you? I don't know about you guys, but every time I say carter pin, that reminds me of Tom Carter. Bon fine hunter, you know what I mean? I don't know, that's just me, probably. European guys. And then the nut here on the inside joint. Then we're gonna tighten them down, and then I'm gonna pre-fill them with grease, because if you tighten, because if you fill grease inside of these things first and then tighten them down, the boot in here is gonna get squished, right? And especially on these new made in China stuff, the boot is gonna split because there's too much grease in there. And then you're gonna already have a torn boot on a brand new joint and grease pouring out of that thing. So tighten it, install it, then grease them. Tom caught up, fine, fine, hunter. Um, <laughs> and then now we got the wheels on, ready to talk that down, and then after that, I think we should be good. So of course, like everything else in this channel, uh, we want to talk things uh, to the exact spec. That's not going anywhere. So I'm waiting for the compressor to build some air right now so we can actually lift the lift up and then lift the lift down, which is not lifting, that's actually lowering it, whatever. <laughs> so one thing I got brand new for this thing as well is of course an air filter and a brand new one barrel. I guess it's a Chinese carburetor actually, but who cares? It was 150 bucks, so it's, it was really cheap instead of actually getting a rebuild kit for the original Holly carburetor. So we're gonna take this thing off in a second as well. But first off, just gonna throw in a new uh, Wix air filter in this uh, ram ass setup here <laughs> as you can see this thing even though it's made in usa pretty black and there's a lot of this is like corn and grass and stuff in it so that junk but we got a brand new wix filter there you go installed done as you guys probably saw in the, in the test drive part of this video, it had a little bit of like a stumble, it cold starts pretty bad, and uh, I have a feeling it's kind of running fat a little bit. It's gonna get return springs off, uh, the vacuum line right there. See the two return springs, don't know why there's two return springs, but uh, probably for a reason, so we're gonna put them back on. There you go, kick down linkages off, and then we just have to remove the safety split for the accelerator cable, and then we have to remove the carburetor. Oh, and the fuel line. This thing out without the fitting actually in the carburetor spinning. That always happens for me. Not this time though. <laughs> you don't have to worry about the fuel running out in the exhaust. <laughs> That's just gonna make for some good old heat in the shop once it's fired up. Now for the accelerator cable, which is pretty nice. This thing actually has a cable. So in the future, if you want to do an engine swap on it, you can pretty much just take the cable and I guess route it up to a 440 carburetor instead if you want to. And I didn't lose the clip, this tiny little clip. This, ow. <laughs> and the cable, there you go. Then we're just gonna pull the two nuts on the carburetor and carburetor's off. There you go. We gotta transfer this over to the new carburetor. So there we go, and there we go. And then maybe this thing can actually make over 100 horsepower. <laughs> oh. So guys, it's time to throw on the new carburetor. It's just gonna plop right down there. So first of all, we're gonna plug one of the vacuum connections over there. We're not gonna need that one. And the big one over here, which as you can see, has a lot of oil on it. <laughs> That's for the PCV. You know, you gotta have compression both on the top side and the other side of the pistons, y'all. Ain't nothing new under the sun there. So there we go, we got the little, uh, that thing on. So now we can put the air cleaner back on. Actually, wait. Wait with the air clean. Let's see if this thing even fires up. All right, let's give it a try, guys. And uh, we're probably
probably going to have to wait a little bit because I have to pop some fuel up there, but... Uh... Maybe it has to come up a little bit, but I, I mean, it is cold, but uh, I have to, I have to keep down the throttle quite a bit for it to actually like idle, but uh... Look at that! She kind of has us a little bit like a cam right now. That's cool. As you guys can see, it's completely dark outside. But uh, we're gonna try to take it for a test drive and see how the steering and suspension goes. Man, let me tell you what, this thing runs damn good now. Listen to this rip. Ha! Take it down. This thing runs so damn smooth now. Let's go freaking hit the road right now. Might as well turn the cow already so it's easy to get out of the shop. And shove the back end off the hood. Shove this corner off the hood. There you go. <laughs> Shut this part. Okay, I'm done. Don't worry. <laughs> So one thing I can already tell you guys is the clonking noise. I have a feeling maybe now it's brakes. Uh, nothing should be able to move in the in the suspension now. I would assume it'd still be the arm that goes from the control arm up to like the front valence or whatever area. I guess that could still be causing some kind of problem. Woo! Dude, this thing got some got some juice now it got it got some power before i couldn't just like stomp the throttle it kind of had like a dead spot and whatnot accelerator pump it then foot brake and then it could kind of do like a burnout or whatever what you just saw in the shop i literally just punched it and it started to spin out the shop sure it's concrete and it's kind of wet and snow inside the floor but uh, even here in the street right i'm at a standstill now punch it That's that inline 6 225 leading tower of power. Get it done, 91. Power right there. God dang! It doesn't really move that much more. Uh, I mean, we got rid of the dead spot, and it seems like it free wraps a little better and it idles a little better. Um, other than that, power is still the same. I mean, it still feels like 80 horsepower in a two ton car, which I guess is kind of what it is, but uh, let's see if a kick down works as good as before. Oh yeah, we got the kick down going. Let's let's talk about steering wise. There's a little less play in it. Um, but other than that, I mean, it kind of feels the same, not gonna lie, but I mean, it is still a stock car with like soft suspension, sloppy suspension, if you will. So I guess it, it's not gonna make that much of a difference just to get like new tie rods and ball joints. It feels a little more tight. I'm not gonna lie, the steering wheel feels a little bit more tight. Um, it's a little better, but <laughs> not a lot, let's just be honest. Not a whole damn lot, but uh... I, I want to say that like 0 to 100, maybe it's like half a second quicker now. Maybe, you know what, not even, probably not like 0 0.2 seconds quicker or something. And now you can actually like, just like give it 5% throttle and it, and it actually like goes down the road or whatever. whatever. Before you had to give it like maybe 30% throttle before it actually went, but that was kind of because of the dead spot and stuff. So it definitely fixed up some stuff. The carburetor was definitely the bigger uh, improvement to this car right now. Uh, the steering stuff, not that much. I mean, I want to say maybe it great gain like five solid horsepower, you know what I mean? But uh, hey, five horsepower is five horsepower, right? But I mean, 
think it drives pretty good now. I don't feel like there's any sounds while driving. The only thing is when you go from reverse to forward or forward to reverse, just like inside the shop or whatever, uh, it kind of has like a clonk, clonk sound. And for one, I know the drive shaft or maybe even worse, the ring and pinion gear has uh, some slop going on. And uh, that's, that is what it is, I guess. Listen when I go forward now. Okay, I'm totally standstill on the brake now. Drive, that was a little bit of clonk, and then I go. Well, no clonk this time. <laughs> to be honest I mean I really don't feel like we changed anything steering wise I think the steering wheels are, is a little bit more tight but it, it's hard to say man well boys and girls that ends this video it is currently 6 p.m. and I gotta have this video up in probably four hours or so so and I haven't edited anything yet so uh...